everyone and welcome to another video today in this video i have a special guest a little background of the guest he is a 2006 southland defensive player of the year first team all american he's in the mcneese hall of fame he has the record for sacks in a game and in a season for the school and he was a third round pick for the philadelphia eagles brian smith i have a lot of questions to ask you man i'm, I'm i mean this, this is this is dope you know what i'm saying you're a mcneese legend you're an, you know former nfl player so I want to start in the beginning. Very mm -hmm. curious. What made you interested in football? Like, what made you love football? Oh, man. Oh, really, man? Football wasn't my first thing, man. I was a, I was a track guy, man, track and basketball, you know. Gotcha. Um, man, I, I loved it in, in high school, man. Out there, I just did I did the high jump. You know, I went, went to state in high jump. I got college offers for um, high jump, but um, – I had a uh, college coach, man. He passed away. His name was W.T. Johnston. And uh, he came up to me in the hallway one day. He just said, man, mm -hmm. come out there and um, try to play football. You know, I had a, my brother was playing. I got a twin brother. And I went out there. You know, and it's history from there. Got you. Okay. So, yeah, I saw that you were also – you also excelled – in basketball and you also excelled in track what made you pick like so what made you pick football since you were so good in other sports what made football single out for you football single out for me because i figured if uh we're going to be out in the sun uh, uh -huh. i want some type of <laughs> protection you know a helmet you know pants you know track you really just out there you're getting burnt in the sun you know so that's why i chose yeah, true. it <laughs> <laughs> true i mean was it always your dream to make it to the nfl not at all, man. Um, I was just doing it just for something to do, to keep from going home after school, mm -hmm. you know, just to, you know, camaraderie with friends. And, you know, that's pretty much while I did it. You know, so it's your senior year of high school, right? Mm -hmm. um, just walk us through what is the selection process when you're looking at what schools, you know, you have these offers, what schools you decide to pick when you're going to college? I, I had about three offers. Uh, McNeese, Northwestern State, and uh, Stephen F. Austin. And um, so because I only played two years of um, high school football. I, I, started, I know it was three, sophomore. No, it was junior. I played my junior and senior year of football. The rest of it was uh, football, almost basketball and track. And um, mm -hmm. so I didn't really have that many offers coming out. And uh, originally I had chose Northwestern. And uh, but then when I went, I went to Northwestern. That whole thing was let's beat McNeese. Let's beat McNeese. We want to win a Southland Conference. So like, okay, mm -hmm. you know, I'll come here. And then uh, I ended up going to McNeese on a visit, and they're talking about winning national championships. They're talking about winning the conference. So mm -hmm. I'm like, that that conversation, and you know, is different from Northwestern. They're talking about winning championships versus beating one team. So mm -hmm. I chose McNeese. <laughs> Gotcha. And that's a great reason. One person's one team's just focus on trying to get one just one team and yeah, then another yeah. team's focus on winning the whole thing. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. that's different culture completely. I wonder what life would have been like if you picked uh, that other school. But <laughs> hey, <laughs> I mean, obviously, it's a great selection. Like, McNeese was a great selection for you. Yeah. Um, so you pick McNeese. So describe to us, you know, what is the first day like? In training camp at McNeese, like what was that like for you? Man, it was a um, a shock, man. You know, you go from a small school to where it's you know you know everybody on the team. It's maybe 30, 40 guys on the team to where you know it's about ninety guys on the team. You know, a lot bigger, a lot stronger, faster. Uh, talent is you know different array. So you know. The competition level was certainly different, you know. Okay, so walk us through what was life like as a student athlete. I'm very curious. Student athlete was fun, man. You know, you go to class, you know, you play football. You do basically what the NFL do, just go to class. And, you know, there's really no – well, there are set rules, but, you know, you got girls there, uh, friends. Mm -hmm. Uh, no parents, you know. Mm -hmm. What more can you ask for? I mean, did, did, so did people treat you differently since when you're on the school campus? Like, did they treat you as like a celebrity? Like, how they treat you? Yeah, people know who you are uh, when you're on campus as a student athlete, and um, especially you know being a, a 
a pretty good student they know and you know they everybody speaks in ways and just you know friendly and very um uh nice nature you know it's a good environment going back to the college going back to the program was there a player on the team that you looked up to that was someone you could say a mentor that helped shape you to the player that you became mm, i can't just pick out one you know um there's a lot of different guys, you know, you, you kind of, it's kind of like, you know, your skill level, you know, you, you look at a d- couple of different guys, you know, I like this part, I like that part, kind of like build a bear type thing, man. And, you know, this guy might have a certain attitude, this guy, you know, may be great in the weight room. So you want to try to get that aspect, you know, and mm-hmm. it's just different, a lot of different ex- aspects, man. I, I can't really just single out one. Gotcha. I mean, is there is was there a coach that you know basically was like that for you? Mm, oh yeah, I had a position coach. You know, man, he was um, <laughs> he was all over it, man. He he actually played in Magnese, uh Jake Morrison. Um, okay, and, and he went to the I think it was uh, for a while, and he came back and you know uh, gave back to the program uh, by doing that, and he always pushed me because uh, before I had the the set record, he had it. And he always ah. pushed me to, you know, be the best I can be. And so did some of my teammates. You know, uh, Brian Mason was the the uh, other side, DN. And, man, we, we we just competed, man. Man, hey, he had the sack record, and now you get the sack record. That's that's dope. Um, I wanted to ask about said sack record, man. Um, you, you set the school record with five sacks versus what, West Virginia Tech? Is that In is one that game, record? yeah. And I'm just curious, like, what was the, like, did you know you had it that day? And when the game was happening, like, when did you realize that you were on pace for, you know, history for your school? I, I didn't know at all. Uh, actually, Coach Morrison's the one that told me. And uh, he said, we're going to put oh, you wow. back in here. Because it was a blowout game. Um, and he was like, we're going to put you back in so you can get this sack record. You know, it was raining. Uh, it, it was wet. It, it, was, it was a muddy game. And, man, I just. I was like, all right, man, let's go do it then. You know, I, I had these gloves on, man. It was wet, so I ended up taking the gloves off because I didn't want anything to prevent it, and I just went out there and made it happen. Wow. Yo, I mean, <laughs> you didn't even know. That's crazy. You didn't even know what was happening. I mean, did you get a feeling that you're just having a great day, though? Like, wow, I'm just getting to this guy a lot? Did you just, like, man, I was enjoying the game like it was just fun. I wasn't <laughs> even counting the sacks. I wasn't counting the, the tackles or nothing. I was, it was just fun to me, man. So when it came, you had the you got the sack record for a season in McNeese as well. Did you were you like did you know that you were doing that? Did you know that? Or yeah, was it uh, to that other one? yeah, it started coming up um, about you know during the season. You know, I was on the chase for the uh, sack record, and mm-hmm. um, so I mean I didn't go in the games. You know, hoping to get a sack and to beat the record. I went in the games mm-hmm. to be the best player I can be and to dominate whoever they put in front of me and to make plays i mean did y'all did y'all party or something after you got you know you got two sack records did y'all have like was there any celebration or anything after getting these records no it, yeah <laughs> there's some celebration uh not in the club though but you know you know i had fun mm-hmm. and, and celebrate things and uh definitely um you know lifelong memories yeah i mean hey, with with the sack record in the game and in the season I'm. I need to know. Like, could you walk us through what makes you stand out as a pass rusher to be able to do these things? Hmm, man. Long story short, man, just pure grit. You know, the 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 hunger, the desire, the tenacity, the 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 will, everything that's possible to be your best and to do your best to you know, totally annihilate the guy in front of you, you know, uh, offensive lineman, running back, quarterback, receiver, whoever comes across you that's in the opposite jersey, you take care of business. Is there, is there any sacks that stand out for you, like a sack that won a game or a sack that sealed a game? Like, is there any, any of these that really stand out for you that you like, is a good thing I got the guy, like, really helped the team? Man, I have, a, it's a couple, man. Uh, I remember one in um, Portland State, man. I hit the, the quarterback. His helmet popped off. The ball came out. We recovered it. Uh, that was, I actually have that picture. Uh, uh, 
Coach Morrison's friend ended up getting it printed out, um, Jason, and yeah, he did a mm -hmm. nice job for me. We got another one in um, uh, Stephen Elf. You know, I, I, mm -hmm. uh, strip sack the guy picked the ball up and ran in for a touchdown. Uh, that time. was that was that was great. My first touchdown. Um, man, it, it's a great one. I end up breaking the quarterback's uh, clavicle in, in, in the collarbone area. <laughs> Uh, that was, uh, I think, Southern Utah. Uh, they didn't blow the whistle, man. So I, I kept going, and <laughs> that's what I got a penalty on the play. But hey, he remembers that though. I know he, he definitely remembers yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Broke his... <laughs> <laughs> so you, you have all of this dominance. I mean, when did you know that the NFL was a real thing, like that could actually happen? Mm, man, probably. You know, around the, the combine and then like the hula bowl just going out there and um, putting my talents up against, you know, every other guy in the country. And, you know, mm -hmm. seeing that they're no different. The only, the only difference is, is the name of the school, you know. True. True. That's very true. Yeah. And I wanted one more question about McNeese and then we'll go on to the NFL. I see behind you, you have the Hall of Fame plaque the McNeese Hall of Fame. That's a big accomplishment being in the school Hall of Fame. That must feel amazing. I'm curious, what was your reaction when they told you that you are a Hall of Famer? When they hit me up, man, I, I was excited. I was very excited, you know. Um, never expected, you know, to be in a Hall of Fame. You know, like I said, you just go out there and just uh, – the school, you know, gave me a scholarship and done a lot of things for me. And so, you know, what I can do is go out there and represent – uh, on the field for them and represent uh, throughout, you know, the city. And that's all I did. So giving, getting that call or that email just uh, reiterated, you know, that the things that I have uh, laid, the path I laid, you know, didn't go unnoticed and it was appreciated. I mean, would you put yourself on the Mount Rushmore when it comes to defensive players in McNeese? Would that, would that be... Suffice to say, with that, with man, <laughs> I, yeah, of course, I'll put myself on there, you know. Uh, why wouldn't you? Uh, I like to think, you know, a lot of people would, you know. Um, I mean, just can't be um uh, done over, man. You just can't be not at all, and that still hasn't been, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so NFL, very, this is something I've always wanted to ask. Could you describe what that pre-draft process was like for you? Oh, man. It was – I really wasn't, like, nervous or nothing because, I, you know, I was just happy to be there, man. I was happy to be on the stage, on the um, – you know, going to the combine, interviewing with all the teams. I was just happy to be there. Um, and I figured that, you know, whatever happens, happens. And, you know, I was just, you know, at the – my mom's house, you know, me, my mom, and my girlfriend at the time. And, um, you know, got the call, and, man, it just, you know, went from there. It was ecstatic, uh, excited. You know, everybody jumped up, and, you know, within a few hours, you know, the yard was full of family and friends. I mean, how many teams did you do interviews and workouts with? At the Combine, it was probably 15. Teams, you know, they all have like appointments. It's it's very like yeah. like a job type thing. You know, it's appointments, and you got scheduled meetings. Uh, at times, you have them, and then for the the workouts that came, the the teams that came to the school to work me out. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can I can't even remember. I think it maybe was like seven. Uh, I remember mm -hmm. the Patriots. Uh, man, that guy. Uh. Man, he I was out there forever, man. The the strength coach ended up coming in and telling this guy, you know, hey, we gotta, you know, we gotta cut this short, man. Because he, he showed up with a bottle of water, uh, well, a, a tank of water. So I'm like, you know, what's about to go here? Uh Matt Patricia, the defense was a defensive yeah. coordinator uh, at that time. It, it was him that did it. 
Wow. <laughs> I, was there so with these interviews and these workouts, like was there any coaches that were besides, you know, you obviously Matt Patricia, was there any other coaches that would kind of maybe make you a little awestruck, like, oh, this guy's, you know, a big time coach in the NFL and he's, you know, interviewing me, talking to me. Was there any any of that? Oh man, uh Jim Johnson, man, with the Eagles, the uh you know, the deceased uh Hall of Fame defensive coordinator. You know, I, mm. I stayed in with him, uh Coach Reed, um Mike Tomlin, um, mm -hmm. man, some, some some great ones. Jeff Fisher, uh, man, it, it was just all over yeah, the board, yeah. man. Well, what what questions would they ask you in those interviews? Like, what would they ask? Any and everything, man. From you know <laughs> your favorite color to uh, wow. what would you do with your first check, and you know. Um, how many siblings you have, and it's just, it was just anything. Uh, I think it may have been just like, you know, just to see how you would respond in your, your body language to just like some off the wall, you know, type questions. Okay. And was with those teams that are interviewing you, was there any team, like obviously the Eagles, right? Was there any team that you were looking at saying they're probably going to draft me or they may draft me? Like, was there teams that get, gave you a good read that you probably will be on their squad? Oh, man, not at all, man. Um, you, you just you really can't tell. You know, they 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 yeah. they give you they ask you a lot of questions. A lot of teams do, and by the end of the the, the combine or and the, the meetings, man, you don't know what's up and down. Uh, you know, and because I remember when I went to uh, Jacksonville and the guy, the uh, general manager at that time, was like, "Hey, man, we were going to draft you, but you went higher on the board than what we we thought." So. I didn't even interview with Jacksonville. <laughs> oh, well, wow. <laughs> right, where did you think you was going to get drafted? Like what round? Uh, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't have no idea. I was just, I didn't, you know, expect to get drafted. You got to, you know, realize the whole time playing um, college, man, I didn't even, NFL wasn't even in my, um, you know, mind. I was just living mm -hmm. in the moment. And I continue to live in the moment for everything that I did, uh, you know, whether that was, you know, the combine, the, uh, the, the hula bowl, you know, going to all this stuff. I mean, I was just living in the moment and uh, hmm. whatever God had laid out for me, you know, it was for me and nothing was going to stop that. So you get drafted in the third round. Um, do you believe that's, that's where you should have been drafted? Do you feel like, or do you think it was too low, too high? Where do you think you think third round was good? I think it was good, man. From what I did in college and at the level uh, I played against versus the level I played at, you know, yeah. and then when we played bigger teams, that that competitive and that, that, that talent and the chaos that I caused was still there. You know, it was just that I didn't have enough years in, in high school uh, playing a position, you know, so. So when you get the call, who who was talking to you? Was it Andy Reid? Who who is who was talking to you? Yeah, you I talked. I talked to Reid, Andy Reid. I talked to uh, Jim Johnson, and I talked to uh, the uh, the owner. You know, he was in the room, uh, and gotcha. the GM. You got to go. You're playing in Philly now. Like, what 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 stood out to you when you when you went to Philadelphia? Was there anything that like, wow, this is so different from Texas? Like, what like what was the first thing that stood out to you when you entered the city of Philly? Mm. Brotherly love. Yeah, hey, that's what they call it. <laughs> <laughs> see, Philly is rough, man. Uh, I loved it though, man. I embraced the city, um, and I was always, you know, I, I lived like two minutes from downtown. Uh, I was right there in South Philadelphia, and I was always, you know, downtown walking around doing the thing, you know, all the sports sporting complexes are right there uh, by each other. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the Rocky statue, you know, you got, you know, the bell, all of that stuff, the Liberty Bell, everything's there. You know, all of the um, the history that you see in the history books, you go to cities like that, that are, you know, um, you know, the groundbreaking for this country. And you see like the history there, you know, it was, it was, it was great. Yeah, sounds good. I have never been to Philly, but I mean, did you try the cheesesteak? Yeah, I had, cheese I tried a couple of them, man. They were they were a couple of different spots, and uh, it was everything that you can think of. Gotcha. So we get to training camp, 
And you know, from what I see, I'm you know I'm watch hard knocks. I watch all those stuff. And you know, training camp is rough. <laughs> it's hot. It's tiring. Uh, could you describe what your experience was like at training camp in your rookie season? In my rookie season, we had training camp in Lehigh College. Man, we was up on a. I think that college is on the side of a mountain, man. It had to be because you had to go up the mountain to the to the the rooms, the dorms, and then come down the mountain like to the cafeteria and to do the practice and stuff like that. So that was, and they had constant uh, shuttle buses, like taking everybody in and out, or you can drive your car. And um, man, it was, it, it was away from the city. So you didn't have none of those distractions. And um, man, it was just, it was great, man. I, I loved it. You know, you had the morning practice, you had um, uh, the breakfast, a little break, and then the afternoon practice. It was basically you live, breathe football. And that was it. Doing training camp. Yeah, I mean, was there any, you know, this is very popular, like there's rookie hazing. Was there anything that they did to you or any like pranks they did or any type of, you know, on hard knocks, they'd be singing or doing the talent shows? Like, was there anything like that for you? Man, we did the uh, Ricky dinner, man. Um, we took all the, the D line, the, the tackles and the, the, the uh, defensive ends, and we went to uh, Capitol Grill as a very, you know, notarized steakhouse and um they they ran the build up on us man they <laughs> they <laughs> these guys were getting you know bottles of louis the 13 to go you know those are like you know a thousand dollars a piece i think our bill ended up being maybe like seven thousand dollars with me and trevor and you know man. they did everything man it, like you know, i looked one time man the waiter was taking shots i'm like what the what's going on here man <laughs> you know like it's a party, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they ran up the bill. They got the waiter taking shots. That is funny. Yeah, it was. Uh, well, who, who did you have a mentor uh, for the Eagles? Was there anyone you, you know, modeled your game after while playing there? Man, they had a the pro bowler, uh, Trent Cole. Man, uh, that guy was yeah. he was great. Uh, another guy uh, was uh, Darren. Uh, Darren had played with the Saints and stuff. Darren Howard, he played with the Saints mm -hmm. and he ended up with the Philly. He was he played every position on the line. And uh, he was also, you know, a good one. Curious too, man. You, you're playing with the Eagles. Like, was there any awestruck? Like, when you when you're playing, you see these people that are on TV, and now you're playing with them. Was there any person on the team that you like? You know, man, I'm, you know, I man, I'm playing with him, or I'm. He's on offense, defense. You know, like, is there anybody on the team that you feeling like that? No, not no, not that I can say. Um, uh -huh. Man, all those guys made you feel a part of the team. You know. Um, Okay. McNabb, Westbrook, uh, man, all of them, man. You know, they, they talk to you. They come sit down and just talk to you, chat it up with you, and you really felt, you know, part of the family. And you are, man. You're part of the team, and, you know, we all here for the same common goal, and it's, you know, to be the best team out there. And I'm curious, what was it like playing for Andy Reid? What was that like? Coach Reid was a man of very few words, man. Uh <laughs> you know, he, he joked a little bit and, you know, he, he when he talked, you listen and he was just, you know, strict to business, you know, and but it, it was great. And, you know, he expected, you know, the, the, the best out of every guy, you know, no matter what, whether you were Ricky or, you know, 10 year vet, you know, every guy he wanted, you know, you to be the best you. So when you see Andy Reid now and, you know, three time Super Bowl champion, part of a dynasty, one of the top five maybe coaches ever did you see in that moment when you were with them do you see like like does that make sense looking back now like when you were with them like his coaching style and how he you know respects the players and how you know what he does like do you you see that yeah that makes sense that he's a three-time champion now it, it makes a lot of sense man you know um he's still the same guy that he was when he was in philly you know coaching style you know his personality and um you know, good things come to those who wait, you know, and, and trust in the process. And he did, and he got, you know, put on a great team, and they did great things with, with great players. And and look at him, man. He's, a you know, a megastar, you know, Super Bowl coach, and everything he got, is you know, has been earned and deserved. And, it, you know, it really sucks he couldn't get one for Philly because he definitely – I mean, he was a great coach. Man. <laughs> he, he played 14 years and he was a great coach in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. but I don't know, things didn't work out, I guess. But 
Um, when you start playing, you're on the field now. You know, the NFL season has begun. Is there any player that you play on the other team that makes you feel a little awestruck? Like, oh, wow, I'm playing. You know, is there any player on the other team that got you feeling like that? Oh, uh, not, not. I remember playing um, Tennessee and, and um, the freak, man, Javon Curse was, was mm. his size was incredible. Um, um, the guy, uh, Julius Peppers, man, that guy's a monster. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah he, he's, he's a monster, man. And um, uh, Harrison with uh, Steelers, 92. Uh, mm, he, yeah. he was, yeah, man, those, you know, just like looking at defensive guys, you know, they play, uh, you know, not really much into watching the offense, you know, and looking at their guys and, you know, only for purposes to educate myself against them. But as far as, mm -hmm. you know, looking for, you know, spectacular plays, I stick to the uh, defensive side of the ball. Who was the best quarterback or best offensive player that you had to play that year? Like, who was the guy that your team had to scout? Kind of, I'm not saying kept them up at night, but. It was like, man, this guy is a problem. We really got to figure it out. Hmm. I'm trying to think to some those quarterbacks we played back then. I mean, McNabb, you guy. know, was the was the was the best one division. I mean, you had Eli, uh, yeah. Tony Romo, uh, the Chief. I mean, I can't remember who Kansas City had. I'm mean, not Kansas City. Uh, the yeah. Oh yeah. Oh wait. I'm not sure, know. man. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, I'm trying to think, man. That's been so long ago, man. <laughs> Like, like I tell man, you this: that's... when you say McNabb is the best in the division, I know. I mean, a lot. I, I'm with a lot of Cowboy fans. They love some Tony Romo, so they definitely gonna <laughs> they definitely gonna yeah, repeat that. Yeah. <laughs> you got you gotta you know win the big games, you know. Oh, uh, do, do you have a moment? Do you have like a special NFL moment where you're like, or you know, the team or you did something really like impressive that just you know resonates with you the most? And it could be for any team, honestly. You don't have to be with the Eagles. It could be any team. Mm. When I when I started when I got my first start, man, in uh Jacksonville, uh, you know, mm. I, I you know, they noticed the the work ethic, you know, the preparation and my, my play. And uh I went and took a starting spot from a number one draft pick. And um mm. uh, it was it was great, man. I always remember that moment. Who who was that pick? Who who did you take it from? It was uh Quentin, uh, what was Quentin's last name? He, he was at Auburn. Uh, that year they had um, uh, the guy from Florida was the first pick. Then it was Quentin. What was Quentin Groves? Okay. Quentin Groves. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Then they had uh, was, was, he, was he injured or was it just no? Nah, it was just it was just uh, I outplayed. Man, I, and what, how did they tell you that you was getting the start? They just like the coaches came to you and just like how how did how did they tell you that? No, I was in the meeting, you know, watching film. They're like, you know, you're gonna you're gonna go. You know, you know about the practices. You know, when you go out there, they have like a little depth chart, and you see that. And and you know, I was number one in depth chart on the depth chart, taking the reps with the ones, and you know, and it was that start was against the Jets too. Gotcha. Did y'all did y'all win the game? Did y'all win that game? I think y'all did. Y'all had to. Eagles always beat the Jets, actually. I feel like y'all had to. Actually. No, this was with Jacksonville. Oh, Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Never mind. But I, I think y'all surprised. Them. That's their probably just one. And then another member moment, man, was when we played against KC. And uh, mm -hmm. I uh, sacked the guy and he fumbled the ball. You know? That's great, big. Yeah. That's big. And, and did y'all recover? Yes. That's big. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, just talking to you about your college career and how great you were and just your NFL experiences, um, you know, football sounds like it did a really great. I mean, I, I assume football has shaped you into the man you are today. There's a lot of values that you learned from playing football and teamwork and discipline. And um, I'm pretty sure you've taken that into your, you know, everyday life at the moment. Yeah. Um, I mean, could you tell us just like what has football done for you, you know, in all your life? What has what football done for you and you? Football has told me that taught me that you know hard work, perseverance. Uh, it doesn't go without you know being knocked down. You know at times, mm -hmm. you know going through rough times, but you still have to just stay through it. And 
you know, through every thunderstorm, hurricane, whatever, you know, the sun will shine and, you know, it will be a break to where, you know, you will see that your patience and your steadfastness will pay off. And it couldn't say it any better. That was, yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> it couldn't say it any better than that. You know, it's been a pleasure to have you on here, man, and just uh, talk about your very illustrious career. And yeah, he's a Hall of Famer. I'm talking to a Hall of Famer, man. You know, he's <laughs> Hall of Famer. <laughs> but you know, thank you so much for joining. And if you're watching, make sure to like this video and make sure to subscribe to the channel. It's the road to 2,000 subscribers. If you want more interviews, say it in the comment below. And we will catch you on the next video. Out of here. Peace.